and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. NATO allies agreed a package of measures to support Ukraine and Georgia in the Black Sea amid Russian aggression with the aim of enhancing security in the region. The measures will include trainings of maritime forces, joint exercises and information sharing. To talk more about the cooperation with NATO forces, we welcome in our studio today Colonel Hennady Kovalenko. He's a deputy head of General Directorate of Military Cooperation and Peacekeeping Operations Department of the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Hello and thank you for joining. Yeah, good afternoon. So as I have already me mentioned, the measures uh, include uh, training of maritime forces, coast guards, port visits, exercises and sharing information. Now, how important are all of those activities for Ukraine right now? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, let me start with the uh, overall brush up of the NATO-Ukrainian cooperation. Okay. I would like to divide the NATO-Ukrainian cooperation into three main parts. First of all, this is military strategic dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, when our church is participating in the meetings with the NATO church, NATO states church, uh, chief of defense, in order to discuss security situation and uh, as well as uh, the development of the armed forces. Mm -hmm. The second part is military domain of cooperation between uh, NATO and Ukraine, and I will speak about that uh, a little bit late. Uh, so uh, the, the military domain, uh, the domain um, consists of the military exercises, uh, programs, um, professional development, education, and uh, uh, participation in NATO-led operations. Mm -hmm. And the third part is military technical cooperation. This, the third part is mainly about the technical issues, about the data exchange, about equipment, uh, receiving this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And speaking about enhanced, or uh, as you said, special package for uh, enhancing security in the Black Sea and Azov Sea, it's pretty much timely decision because, uh, and for Ukrainian side is clear political signal from the NATO officials because it was stated last week mm -hmm. in Washington during the NATO summit. It's clear message for us that uh, Ukraine is uh, on the radar screen of NATO. And this uh, enhanced me 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 measures in the Black Sea and Azov Sea, is, is, again, it's clear message for us that NATO keeps situation under control and NATO thinks about possible development of the security situation in that region. NATO's decision to prolong the, um, uh, the being of NATO ships in the Black Sea for 20 days right now. Uh, this decision, what could it be tied with, connected to? Uh, I think it's, it's clear uh, oh, Na uh, um, NATO ships package in the um, Black Sea is clear intention uh, for their uh, situation awarenesses. And what we are going to exchange, we are going to exchange recognized maritime picture without the alliance, mm -hmm. uh, with, with, with the alliance. And I would like to say that uh, uh, two weeks ago, there was strategic partnership conference in Jordan, where Ukraine clearly stated that we, uh, we would like to be not only the acceptors of their security and defense in the region, we would like to be full-scale contributors mm -hmm. uh, for the security and, uh, and defense in the region. In this particular context, we offered uh, our uh, navies, uh, our um, seamen, participate in the internship in the different uh, NATO ships. This is one initiative. The second initiative that we expressed is uh, uh, maritime situation data exchange with some uh, classified information as well. And the third uh, initiative that we expressed, we offering uh, our experts, our trainers, to NATO mobile training teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will be brutally honest with you, saying that, uh, <laughs> saying that uh, uh, we have our own bitter experience from participating in the operation on the eastern Ukraine. Mm. And basically, since um, beginning of 2016, we are not only uh, studying from our partners, from our American, British, Canadian, Lithuanian, Polish uh, partners. We are sharing our experience and we can uh, offer much more knowledge and information that we have bitterly gained from the conflict. Okay, but Ukraine is unfortunately still not an official part of NATO, even though we are in the past and there are a bunch of signs that show that, that we are on the right track trying to uh, join NATO. Uh, as you have said, uh, right now Ukraine is trying to <clears throat> be uh, not only the receiver, but also a contributor. Now, how is that, if accepted, how is that going to help uh, Ukraine to integrate into NATO faster? 
Uh, first of all, uh, when we are speaking about participation in the military exercises, mm -hmm. international military exercises, again, uh, that's probably, it can be some news for our uh, audience uh, if I'm saying that in 2014, we participated in only five international military exercises. For this year, we have planned to participate in 26. So we incre increase a lot. And Great. participation... We, participation in the exercise allow, uh, uh, allows us to study the approach, NATO approach, fourth generation, scenario development, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, concept development, this kind of stuff, share our experience and develop our operational capabilities. And the, the, we are pretty much sober that at the end of the day, uh, NATO can say, guys, you have your own capacities to train and they will provide us only mentors, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. to let's observe how we are doing our exercises mm -hmm. or our training. But at the same time, as I already said, that uh, uh, speaking about criteria for NATO, one of them is operational interoperability. And speaking Do about... Do we have that? Uh, okay, we have mechanism for that. Okay. We have OCC, Operational Capabilities Concept, and we have uh, Evaluation and Feedback Program. Mm -hmm. These both programs allows us to train, allow us uh, to train our units and to assess them how interoperable uh, we are with NATO. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, NATO turned 70 not that long ago, and uh, since uh, the beginning, uh, the alliance grew by seven times, right, if I'm not mistaken. And right now, and it, it keeps growing and growing and growing, and Macedonia was the latest... Uh, North Macedonia. North Macedonia, I, I beg your pardon. North Macedonia was the latest to join the alliance, and now uh, there is Georgia and Ukrainian line. Now, in your personal opinion, how fast would any of those, or maybe both of those countries, actually get to the aim? Uh, I just, I, I would like to... Uh, start with the development of the alliance as such. Okay. Because uh, uh, as uh, Jens Stol Stol Stoltenberg already said that uh, right now NATO on the third stage of the development, the first stage was collective defense and it en basically ended in 1991. Mm -hmm. After that, that was uh, uh, peace and security projection or stability projection. That was the second phase. Okay. But right now, since 2014, NATO is on the stage on the collective defense, projecting security, stability, and counterterrorism. And bearing in mind the third stage of development of NATO, Ukraine is pretty much fit on the purpose of projection, stability, and security uh, in the global context. But if we're talking uh, in, um, in terms of political arena, um, how, how profitable, let's say, would it be for NATO to take Ukraine in when Ukraine is in the middle of a hybrid war, in the middle of an aggressive, con uh, of an aggressive conflict with another country, meaning Russia? Why would a great alliance that has already existed for 70 years take up the responsibility to protect a newcomer? First of all, I would like to say this is my own opinion that we must uh, solve the, pro the, the current conflict uh, before we'll, uh, we will be a NATO member because I'm mm -hmm. pretty much uh, uh, in doubt that uh, NATO will take such risk of having uh, open conflict uh, on their borders. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would um, uh, endorse uh, or even admire uh, NATO initiative uh, concerning the um, East European presence. Mm -hmm. As you know, they deployed, I mean, they, the NATO nations, they deployed military formation in the Baltic states and mm -hmm. in Poland as well, uh, in Romania and Bulgaria. So we already see some uh, NATO, uh, some preparation for the operational phases and possible even probably the, 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 the conflict scenario with the Russian Federation. And speaking about uh, uh, possible uh, future NATO, uh, NATO membership for Ukraine, I would like to say that we need to develop, to finish developing our own capacities and capabilities to defend the country, to contribute to the uh, regional security and stability as well. Mm -hmm. Well, judging by the fact how sure uh, you are of the fact that the conflict is going to be over soon, let's all hope that it's going to happen soon enough. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Slava Ukraini. Heroim Slava. That was Colonel Hinadi Kovalenko. He is a deputy head of General Directorate of Military and Peacekeeping Operation Department of the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.